Hey everybody, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to Subject. Subject is a horror text adventure game that involves you waking up in a strange place, unsure of what happened and how you got there. Pain. You open your eyes, pain making your whole body from. You look around, it's very dark. You're laying on a hard wooden bed frame. No mattress. Bloodied bandages are scattered all around you. It's almost pitch black. You can barely make out the bed you're laying on and a nearby wall. You seem to be in a small, bare room. You can very barely see something white on the far wall. You can faintly hear something. The wind outside. There's a faint rotting smell all around. This place must be very old. You slowly make your way across the room, using your hands to feel your way around. You find something hanging on the bare wall. It's a mirror. You're covered in bandages. Why? You don't know. You can't even see your own eyes properly in this darkness. I somewhat expect me to be the subject at the end. You found a door. It doesn't have a lock, but it's not budging. Is something blocking it from the other side? You find some boards across the wall. Looking closely, they seem to be blocking off a window. There are planks nailed over the window. They seem to be new and look quite strong. You can hear a scrambling noise somewhere. Rats. A distant, sweet smell is coming in through the planks. You feel around the planks and try prying them open. They yield right away with a splintering noise and fall to the ground, exposing a window. There's no glass pane, but it's bored up on the other side too. You peel off the planks again, revealing the space beyond. It's a dark corridor. Why did the windows lead here? The corridor leads right and left. There's the windows on the walls. It's dark outside, but at least you can see better than in the room. The corridor goes left and right. There's nothing here. Only some windows on the far wall and a hole of splintered wood where you came from. The windows are very dirty. You can barely make out the outside. There seems to be a tree outside, and it's dark out. You can't even see any moon or stars. A delicious smell is coming from the right. I wonder if that smell is gonna be human flesh. Perhaps I am not human anymore, or I never was. You move to both ends of the corridor. There's nothing but windows and bare walls. At each end you find a door. At the right end of the corridor there's a red door, and a blue door on the left end. We'll take the red door for now. You go for the red door. As you cross it, you're immediately assaulted with a delicious smell. You're in a spacious room. It's full of tables and large metal closets. Besides the door you came in through, there's a large metal door on the far wall. Everything is spotlessly clean and looks metallic. The walls have no windows. There's only a tiny ventilation grill on the ceiling. There's a mouth-watering smell permeating the room. But you can't see anything end up all around. Maybe it's from the closets. You approach one of the metallic closets. You try the handle and it opens with a loud screech noise. There's nothing but plastic Tupperware containers inside. The containers are full of bland looking sludge. Some sort of puree. It doesn't look appetizing at all. 
there's a slightly disgusting odor coming from the Tupperwares, but delicious smell is still coming from somewhere else in the room. Don't trust Tupperware too much. Could be some very weird things in those Tupperware. You close the closet doors and move back to the center of the room. Knowing from other horror stories that involve Tupperware, it's usually, well, human flesh. So we'll check out the metal door. You approach the heavy metal door. It has a big heavy handle and an electronic lock box on the wall. The light on the box is flashing green. The door is smooth and looks very thick. The lockbox on the side is flashing a green light. There's a deliciously mouth-wandering smell winning, wafting from beyond the heavy metal door. The heavy door opens with ease. You're assaulted with delicious aroma. There's a pile of delicious food in the room. The smell is maddening. I can't even tell what it is. How do we know what his concept of delicious is, though? Hmm. You're assaulted by the beguiling aroma of the food. Unable to resist, you take a bite. The food is even better than you had imagined. You continue the eating, unable to stop. You keep eating, and eating, and eating. You are so engrossed in the food you fail to hear the door closing behind you. An electronic beeping noise. The hiss of air and the coldness gradually getting worse in the room. By the time that the food is gone, you're too full to move, and the room is freezing. Leave the room with the food. Why? It smells so good. Why not eat the food first? Because the food is a death trap. Reluctantly, you turn around and exit the lower room. You hear an annoying scrambling noise as you leave, and a door closing in the distance. You decide to get out and try the blue room at the other end of the corridor. You open the blue door to reveal a spacious room. There's a large wooden table in the center, and lots of bookcases lined up against the walls. There are two doors at the end of the room, one plain wood and the other with ornate carvings. The table looks very fancy. There's a single vase without flowers in the middle of it. The walls are lined with bookcases, but none appeal to you. A plain wooden door and an ornate carved door at the other side. You think you can hear something, but it's too faint to tell what it is. There's a disgusting smell coming from the empty vase on the table. Hmm. You approach the nearest bookcase. It's filled with books. The bookcase is crammed with books. There's no spaces anywhere. I see plenty of spaces. One, two, three. You can grab some books right there. You pick up something at random. Not really interested. You can't read it. You walk back to the center of the room. I really do suspect I'm a zombie or some kind of being like that. He found the things in the temple were disgusting. But it's possible that was like normal human food. While the thing in the freezer could have been something like either a trap food designed specifically for him. Or something a little more sinister, like I said, human flesh, blah blah blah. It's an empty vase at the center of the table. You look inside the vase. There's some water inside and the remains of some old flowers. There's a disgusting smell coming from the vase. It's offensive to your senses. 
but you can't figure out quite why. You take the vase and smash on the floor. The crashing noise was strangely nice to your ears. Among the remains of the now broken vase, you find a small key. It's very ornate and has the shape of a flower in the handle. The remains of the broken vase are lying on the floor. You walk back to the center of the room. It's a plain wooden door. It's rough untreated wood. There's no keyhole. You can feel the traces of a weird smell from within. You can't hear anything from beyond the door. You try to open the door, but it seems to be jammed from the other side. I wonder if there's some kind of secret switch in the bookcase. I don't think so. Let me just check real quick. No. Okay. It's an ornate carved door. It's a very ornate door, filled with carvings of plants and flowers. There's a keyhole. There's a vaguely disgusting smell coming from beyond the door. You can hear the wind. You use the key you found inside the vase to open the door. As you enter, you're surrounded by a disgusting, sticky feeling. All around you, plants are rotting in pots. There's an artificial pond occupying the center of the room. The room seems to be some sort of greenhouse. There's a glass door in the far glass wall leading outside, and a small metal door to the right. You feel sick. The room is large and filled with plants of all sizes. It seems to be a greenhouse. The entire far wall is made of glass. You can see the trees outside. There's a glass door surrounded by dying plants. To the right, you can see a small metal door. You can hear the wind and the rustling of the trees outside. An overpowering, disgusting stink permeates the room. You feel sick. You walk up to the pond. Much like everything else in the room, the smell is strong. The pond is just a man-made square hole in the floor filled with water. Leaves and twigs are floating in the murky water, and the bottom is filled with debris. The water seems to be stagnant and filled with rotten plants. The smell is terrible, but somehow not as offensive as the odor coming from the still live plants. A lot of smelling involved with this character. He seems to find a lot of things disgusting and smell, like flowers. You reach down and tenderly touch the water. It's not cold. It feels quite nice, actually. You step into the water. It feels good. You sit down. The bottom of the pond is very dirty, but you don't mind it. It's very nice. You lie in the water, submerged for some time. You finally emerge, accidentally swallowing some of the water in the process. It's surprisingly tasty. You take a few more gulps. You don't feel so sick anymore. You walk up to the glass door. You can see the night outside through it. The glass door is on the glass wall of the room, flanked by flower pots. You can see outside through the glass. Outside, there's a small road leading away from the door and into the trees. You can hear the wind outside. It's quite soothing. You open the door and leave the greenhouse. It's dark outside. Windy. Trees everywhere. It's dark. You can only see trees in a pitch black sky. The wind is strong. The smell is... Trees. Wind. Can't. 
Nam. Human intruders? You open the door easily. A weird grating noise goes off from somewhere inside. As soon as you enter, you see a figure scurry around the corner, emitting nasty noises. You're in another corridor. There's a bend further on. The figure went that way. Strange. It smells strange. You can hear a scrabbling noise getting further away. You hurry after the figure and go around the bend. Some figures are hunched at the end of the corridor, moving erratically, seemingly looking at you. The figures are indistinct and hard to make out. You can only see blobs of eyes. They look ugly. You can almost taste something. The smell. Smell. You can't quite place it. You cock your head and try to listen. The figures are emitting a constant stream of chittering noises. It sounds grating and annoying. You'd wish they'd shut up. You take a few steps towards the figures. One of them lets out a high-pitched noise that hurts your ears. You're just a few feet away from them now. The figures are shaking violently now. It looks like they could attack at any moment. One of the figures is now jabbering constantly. You grunt in annoyance. They smell... familiar. You open your mouth and try to say something. Upon hearing you, one of the figures jumps upright and strikes you at you with something. Pain. Something sharp connects over your temple. You retaliate by swatting the figure away. It crashes into the wall easily. Panic ensues. The other figures start running around. You see red. After a while, when things are calm again, you see a knife is embedded in your back. It doesn't hurt, but it makes you tired. You decide to lie down the rest. The walls are pretty now. They smell good, too. Absently licking some red residue from your mouth, you fall asleep. You hesitantly back away. There's something familiar about the figures, but you can't quite figure out what. One of the figures gets up and makes some noises that sound like an inquiry. You cock your head in response. The figure keeps making noise. It sounds familiar, almost nostalgic. You turn around and start to leave. As you take a few steps, something crashes against your back. You feel a prick as something small pierces you, and everything goes black. So in that one, I believe you were rescued by them. I guess they're related or something. So, 
I guess it stabbed you in the back with probably like a tranquilizer or something. In the previous one, I think when you approached him, they saw it as a threat. Like maybe you've gone mad, or maybe you were mad, you just don't realize it from by his perspective. So that thing kind of just escalated and, you know, you kind of massacred them. As soon as you enter, you see a figure scurry around the corner, emitting nasty noises. You hurry after the figure and go around the bend. The figures are pathetically hunched against the wall. They're shaking and irritating. They smell delicious. You can hear them yammering away. The noise they make is grating and unpleasant. You take a few steps towards them. They smell real good. Almost as good as the food back in the fridge. Maybe they're hiding some food. You walk to the metal door. There's nothing special about it. It's a plain metal door. There's no keyhole or lock of any kind. The door seems to be quite flimsy. There's only silence from within. You easily open the door and go inside. You're startled right away. It's a corridor. And in distance, you can see something odd. Oh, it's just Slender Man. It's kind of a cliche now. He appears in all these worlds. I suppose that's what happens when you become an A-lister in Hollywood. There's something at the end of the corridor, but you can't quite make out what it is. It startled you going in. You can't hear anything. You can only smell a greenhouse behind you. Hesitantly, you take a few steps. Something moves at the end of the corridor. You stop. You take a few more steps, and again something moves. You stop again, scared. You take a deep breath and close your eyes. You decide to run. Arms outstretched, run forwards until, soon enough, you hit something. You move a shaking hand, feeling around. You can only feel a flat, cool surface. Maybe I'm looking at a mirror. You can't smell anything but the distant greenhouse. Even when you strain your ears, you can't hear anything nearby. Hesitantly, you open your eyes. It's a mirror.
You run back to the greenhouse, spooked. You can't breathe. The sticky, horrible smell chokes you. Your head is filled with the taste of the green. You feel very sick. No more. No more. Unable to take it, you go back for the metal door. Eyes closed, breathing heavily. No more. You decide to run. You expected to crash into something. Whatever was at the end of the corridor. A piece of glass. It's all broken. You can see an opening in the wall. Too agitated to stop and think, you climb into the hole and keep running. Some time passes. Your heart calms down enough to look around. It seems to be a corridor. You dimly remember climbing down the set of stairs and running through a narrow space to get here. There are very faint lights on the wall. The corridor is dark, long and narrow. You can't see the end. You can hear something in the distance. There's a very faint, nice scent. It seems to be far away. You walk a bit. The corridor does not change in the slightest. Still narrow and featureless. As soon as you arrive to the end of the corridor, you see another passage going left and right. You immediately notice a delicious smell coming from the right. You follow your nose and walk left. You walk a bit more. The lights on the walls are not on here, and it's very dark. As you advance, the delicious smell gets stronger. Encouraged, you hurry up. Eventually you get the feeling of leaving the narrow corridor and stepping into a bigger space. You follow your nose a few more steps with your hands eagerly outstretched. Food. It smells good. You touch something and eagerly bring your mouth to it. Not food. So I was right. The delicious smells were corpses. I don't know if they're human corpses or what type of corpses, but corpses nonetheless. And the ones he rejects are like flowers, um, probably human food. You take the left and walk for a while, leaving this nice smell behind you. As you walk, you hear the sound of running water getting nearer. Eventually you come up to a large room. It's filled with water in the center, but a thin walkway runs along the side into a dark tunnel. The room is filled with water, with only a walkway leading to a dark tunnel. The sound of running water is pleasing to you. You bend down and lightly touch the water. It's cool. You walk into the tunnel. You hear a scrambling noise behind you in the distance. You hasten your steps, and soon get lost in the darkness. So that's it for subject. As we see, we were in fact the monster all along, or at least something that's not quite human. I don't know if you were once human. 
It's possible you had a biased perspective. So when you saw the weird formless face people or whatever, and you couldn't really quite understand them, that could have just been a perspective thing, and they could have just been normal human beings. Um, possibly the ones who ran this facility or whatever. Or, um, caused you to be free. Because they seem to take you away afterwards. Uh, there seems to be two different text files also. Like, there's the people running the thing, and there's, like, the people who are kind of, I guess, overseeing the bigger project? Something like that. So the ones who might have knocked you out and ran might have been the ones who actually were handling the project locally in that area. That's what I think. Anyway, a very cool game. It reminded me a bit of the Song of Saya. A uh, very good visual novel. It had a lot of that kind of biased perspective kind of thing going on. And the whole meat smelling good human flesh thing. So, thank you all for watching me play Subject, and I'll see you guys later.